Welcome back to the Tuesday edition of Sports Call here. Brett Pritchard, Randy Lee, and Andy Graham. And at this time, we want to go to the phone lines and welcome in the play-by-play announcer for the Tennessee Vols, Bob Kesslin. Bob, uh, first of all, the thing I want to start with is uh, the new head coach at Tennessee, Butch Jones. First of all, how do you feel like he's doing and do you think he is taking this team uh, in, in this program in the right direction? And, you know, the expectations got a little bit higher. But I, I think the, the Missouri game kind of brought everybody back down to thinking, you know, there's still a big rebuilding job to do here. Uh, Tennessee still doesn't have the players to compete from a depth standpoint. So that's what Butch Jones is trying to do, just trying to get through the season, get uh, maybe to a bowl game, have a winning year, and then hit the recruiting trail again and restock the roster. Bob, I want to go back to the Florida game. Uh, that You know, the Tennessee-Florida game's a, a heated rivalry over in the Eastern Division. Uh, you guys go down to uh, to, uh, to the Swamp, and, and that was one of the sloppiest first halves of football I have ever seen on both sides, both Tennessee and Florida. It was like which one of them didn't want to win the football game. And, uh, you know, I know Tennessee struggled at quarterback and, and came back toward the end of that game. What was the mood after that game uh, of the team? Because that one was one that I thought Tennessee let slip through their hands. And as you see Florida go on through the season, you can tell they can't score any points. They've got a good defense, but uh, there's a chance they could uh, lose three or four more games coming down the stretch. Well, what was the mood of the team after that game? Well, I think you hit a lot of the, the, the points that the Tennessee folks thought, too. Um, you know, Tennessee decided to go with Nate Peterman, a quarterback, um, he uh, it was his first start. It looked like it was his first start, especially on the road in the SEC, and that's never easy. And then somewhere along the line, he broke his thumb, and uh, nobody knows exactly when that happened. But it's, if you're a quarterback and uh, you can't throw, that's awfully hard. So uh, then they went with Worley in the second half and, and did some good things. But, uh, you know, the, the key thing early for Tennessee – all these young receivers. I mean, you forget uh, the Tennessee lost Justin Hunter, who's in the NFL, Cordero Patterson, who's been spectacular so far this year in the NFL, Michael Rivera, the tight ends in the NFL, and Zach Rogers uh, is in the NFL. So you lose four quality NFL receivers. I, I don't care who you are. Your offense is not going to be clicking um, and not going to be just you don't miss a beat because of that. So it's it took a long while for the receivers and – and the quarterbacks to get on the same page. I think they're doing much better with that. But uh, they were in no, you know, at that point in time, that team was not in a position to, to take a game like that, steal a game in Florida. I think you're right. I think it was there to be had. But I, don't, I just don't think Tennessee's offense at that point in time was ready to step up and take a game like that. Bob, this is Andy. I, I noticed uh, I was a little surprised uh, that uh, Tennessee put the ball in the air 42 times uh, with the freshman quarterback, Joshua Dobbs. Uh, was that just a circumstance of how the game unfolded, or does this uh, offensive coaching staff have that much uh, confidence in what Dobbs is capable of? Well, I think if you look at the running stats, that probably indicates to, to you why they did it. I mean, Rajon Neal had eight carries for eight yards, and Marlon Lane wasn't much better. Um, Arkans- I mean, Missouri's defensive front just whipped Tennessee all night long. Uh, Tennessee got also in the point where they they played one of their sloppiest games coming into the end of the game. Tennessee was one of the top teams in the conference in terms of penalties, least penalties, and then suddenly against Missouri they've got nine of them and uh, six of them false starts and a couple of holding penalties and and it seemed like every time Tennessee started to drive it was first and fifteen and uh, then they couldn't run the ball and so. I think Missouri came into the game, and I wouldn't be surprised if Auburn doesn't do the same thing. Um, we're not going to let Rajon Neal or the Tennessee running game beat us. Let's see if this 18-year-old freshman quarterback can do it, and can he do it with his arm, and that's kind of what Missouri did. So they stacked the box. It was just awfully hard to run the ball. Yeah, I definitely think that's uh, going to be Auburn's game plan. Obviously, they will look at this game film and see the Missouri run for – over 330 yards, and that's obviously what Auburn does best. They only threw nine passes against Arkansas. Uh, what do you believe Tennessee has to do to, to pull this upset? Well, they got to tackle better, and they got to tackle the quarterback, something they could not do against Matty Mock. I mean, Mock ran for over 100 yards against Tennessee, and uh, Tennessee hadn't been good all season long tackling quarterbacks. It's uh, for whatever reason 
you know, one of the reasons they lost to Florida is they couldn't they couldn't tackle Murphy. And uh, even South Alabama had a really good quarterback. They had a hard time getting to the ground. So, uh, you know, Tennessee's defense is not blessed with great speed, especially sideline to sideline. And uh, if your defensive ends get hooked, then it's up to those linebackers to make plays. And and uh, Tennessee has not been able to do that very well sideline to sideline. And and um, Matty Mock really exposed him even more on Saturday night. I mean, I don't think he came into the game thinking he was going to run it that many times, but he was open and took off, and Tennessee couldn't tackle him. So I'm sure that Auburn has looked at that tape as well, and uh, and we'll see the Auburn quarterback at least and try and run it. You know, I was uh, what just got in watching some film. They they do a very good job with their formations, and and it's really hard sometimes to figure out who's got the ball. So. I think Marshall does an excellent job with his with his ball fakes, and I was very impressed with uh, just the fact that Auburn kind of lines up and says we're going to run it at you and see if you can stop it. And not many folks have been able to do that this year. And we have Bob Kessling on the phone with us here, the uh, play-by-play announcer for the Tennessee Vols. Bob, before we let you go, I want to fast forward into the future and, and get your perspective on this program, uh, obviously, and, and and where you think uh, uh, the the Vol Nation is headed. Because uh, you know, you 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 go all the way back to uh, the very first part of the BCS, you know, and, and Tennessee comes into the BCS, winning a, a national championship there with T. Martin, and uh, it looked really good. And Philip Fulmer was a long-standing and coach there and you know uh, the Eastern Division always had to go through Neyland Stadium uh, along with uh, uh, with the Swamp it seemed like uh, those were the two top teams there for forever it was either Tennessee or Florida uh, now Georgia being recently mixed in there but it's been a while uh, for the Tennessee Vols since uh, they've been on top of the, the East how long do you think uh, we are away from seeing Tennessee gain prominence back in the Eastern Division well you, you hope sooner than later but uh you know, this is still a Tennessee team that's got a lot of rebuilding to do, and um, they're playing this year with a lot of veterans in the offensive line. I mean, they start four seniors. I think they're five seniors playing in the defensive front. So the, you're going to lose a lot of folks, a lot of veteran players who have played a lot. So uh, Butch Jones is trying to restock the roster, and, uh, uh, you know, in this league it's hard, and uh, it's not exactly like you can just par- cherry-pick the best players and, and get back on your feet. I mean, everybody else is going for those great players, too, in this conference. So uh, I think there's hope, though. I think Tennessee fans understand the process. They they have a lot of faith in Butch Jones because of the fact uh, that he's won every place he's been. He's won four conference championships uh, in his last six years as a head coach. Uh, his formula is proven. The players enjoy playing for him. Uh, it, they, just, they just don't have enough depth. They don't have enough speed, and it's hard. And so... You know, Butch Jones is trying to get every game he can into the fourth quarter and see if he can figure out a way to win it. And they've come close a couple of times. But um, the, but the schedule has just been absolutely incredible, the fact that you're playing seemingly top ten teams and sometimes top five teams every single week. And uh, I, I think it's worn on this team a little bit. I, I just think in the second half you, you kind of saw them a uh, little little – the leg it a little bit. So we'll see. I, I would hope they would bounce back and would think they would at some coming this weekend back, back in Neyland Stadium. So I would think they'd be ready to go on Saturday against Auburn because, again, their goal is to get to a bowl game and, and finish up with a winning season. Well, Bob, before we let you go, i got to ask you one more thing. Uh, obviously, Tennessee coming off a win against South Carolina went into the Alabama game with a little confidence, uh, but uh, Al- Alabama really controlled that game from the outset. Talk, tell everybody your opinion on, on this Alabama team. I mean, we all know what Alabama's been able to do three out of the last four years and win national championships. But what's your honest opinion uh, about this Alabama team? You know, it's interesting uh... – I've gotten to see Oregon and Alabama in person this year, which is kind of rare when you, when you look at things. Not many guys get to see the number one and number two teams, especially when they're along several thousand miles apart. But I, I, comparing the two, I, I was very much impressed with Alabama. I, I just think they're so physical. I don't think they get enough credit in their front seven, just how, how you know the, the back end gets a lot of credit for how well they cover. But that front seven is hard to move. And, and they play well. And, and McCarron, how he's not in the running for the Heisman Trophy, it's hard to understand. All he does is just put his team in a position to win and execute the offense. And I guess because he does it with such ease, uh, perhaps people don't give enough credit. But I, I don't I don't see any weaknesses in the Alabama team. I think they're too deep all across the board. And, 
And uh, I, I don't know. They, they, you know, maybe they don't have the overall star power that the, pa- the past couple of teams have had, but uh, I, I sure think they play well as a team. And uh, the way they came out against Tennessee and just took that game was over in ten minutes, and just how they took it over was very, very impressive to me. Well, Bob, we appreciate uh, you being on the program this afternoon. That's good stuff there, my man. And uh, uh, looking forward to a, a, a big game in Neyland Stadium, 11 o'clock this Saturday. Well, guys, I appreciate the call, and uh, welcome all the Auburn folks up here. It's, uh, you know, I remember when this was the first game uh, for both teams in the SEC, and that was Red made it really special. The divisions have kind of made a, put a different twist on this game, but still Tennessee and Auburn have had a long, long history of great games, and uh, I hope it's another good one on Saturday. So thanks for the call, guys. Thank, definitely, Bob. Uh, thank you so much. That's Bob Kessling, the uh, play-by-play announcer for the Tennessee Vols. Uh, again, Auburn, Tennessee, uh, 11 o'clock kickoff on ESPN. So uh, an early start for the Tigers. Uh, they've been used to uh, night games pretty much the entire season. So uh, this will be our first look at an early start. And a couple of years ago, you know, Auburn struggled with those early starts. Uh, hopefully uh, that won't be the case uh, this time at Needland Stadium. We're up against a break. When we come back, uh, we'll welcome Randy back in, and we'll continue to take your phone calls, 888-9-TIGER-9 or 334-887-3401 locally. More to come on this Tuesday edition of Sports Call.